When analysing qualitative data collected through focus groups, there are some extra opportunities available to you and some extra types of analysis that are not available when analysing interviews. I suggest that an analysis of focus group data can take place initially at least in, at three levels. There can be an analysis of all the comments made by one particular individual on a subject. There can be an analysis of the discussions of all group members on a particular topic. And there can be analysis of the manner in which people interact with each other. To take first the analysis of an individual's contribution, by going through the transcript of the focus group, you should be able to identify everything that an individual said on a particular topic. And what a focus group gives you the chance to look at, which perhaps doesn't happen so much with interview data, is whether an individual's views change or are modified as they're presented with alternatives by other members of the focus group or as other members of the focus group may ask them questions. And so this may give you an indication of how strongly an individual holds their views. If they continue to say pretty much the same thing, uh, even when presented with other points of view, then you can conclude they have quite strong convictions. But it may be that as you see the focus group go on, you see a slightly different tone or a slightly different way of talking about an issue, which suggests that an individual's views may have been modified by those of others. In this case, it's uh, useful to go back and to look to see if you can see the contribution that somebody else made that seemed to bring about a change, change in the point of view. And you can reach conclusions as to how strongly the individual held their view and also anything that may have modified the view. At the level of the group, focus groups are very good for showing you where there are shared understandings and where there are common values. The only thing you have to watch for here is the person who doesn't make a contribution, should they be assumed to also share those common views or those common values. It's quite unusual in a focus group for everybody to comment on a particular topic or a particular question. The only way to do this would be to make it a form of group interview whereby everybody answers a question in turn, which takes away some of the interactions that provide the richness of data of a focus group. But the disadvantage of this is, as I say, the question about the person who hasn't contributed. Do they support the consensus or are they holding another view but just not wanting to express it because they can see that other people disagree with them? So this is a, a challenge for a, a researcher and I can't offer any definitive answer except to say be cautious when you're assuming an argument as a consensus. Finally, group interactions can tell you something about the nature of the relationships in the group. This is quite often evidence when people disagree with each other. How people disagree with each other tells you something about the nature of the relationships between them. If people are very blunt in their disagreement, this may reflect the fact that the group don't get on particularly well together. Or it may actually reflect the opposite. It may be that people feel comfortable that they can express their views very forthrightly and that there won't be any bad feeling or, or long-term consequences. And again, this is a, a challenge for the researcher to try to establish which of those two is true. If, on the other hand, people are more cautious about uh, disagreeing with each other, is this because they're having consideration for each other's feelings? Or is it because there's tensions between the group that they don't want to worsen by being too open in their disagreement? So that raises more questions than answers, but I hope it demonstrates a little bit of the richness of data and the range of issues that need, need to be considered when analysing focus group transcripts. And if you'd like to read more, then I strongly recommend this book, Qualitative Data Analysis from Start to Finish, which is written by me, Jamie Harding of Northumbria University, and is available from Sage Publications.